was an outstanding performance. I thought the boys were very heroic out there. I'm very proud of them. The job hasn't been done yet, and I think that's very important that uh, we understand that. So it's a good feel, but the job's not done. We've got a lot of history of France and rugby world cups, and uh, we respect them. What else can I say? Four years of planning, I suppose. Four years of guys being frustrated and wanting to do the job. Four years of trying to get things right. Was because of mental strength and there's a lot of mental strength in this group now and it's led by Richie but led by the other senior players as well Brad Thorne, Kevin Mialamu, Andrew Hall, Conrad Smith, the leaders who have been here for a long time. They've got a, a deep down desire in the gut to do the business and they're strong upstairs. We're now giving ourselves a chance, and that's what you, you do all that for, is to give yourself a chance in a final. I think there's a lot of respect with, with the French, you know, and you know, we've had some good times playing against them, and we've had not so good times. The French, uh, they've given themselves a chance now, and they'll back themselves, um, so she's all on. New Zealand hosted the first ever Rugby World Cup final. It was here in Auckland, the city of sales at Eden Park. So now in 2011, this rugby mad nation gets to host another World Cup final. France versus New Zealand. All started on September 9. And now we're down to the last two. The house full sign is up as you would expect. And Auckland and New Zealand. Well. The country has been a wonderful host over these last six weeks or so. And it is a sea of black down on the waterfront. And of course, you can see there from the crowd shot that there's a lot of all black supporters in here. What about France? Well, they beat Japan and Canada. Then they lost to New Zealand and Tonga. They beat England in the quarterfinals and Wales in the semi final. They didn't score a try. It was three penalty goals that got them into the final. And New Zealand, well, the only unbeaten team at Rugby World Cup 2011. Down Tonga, Japan, France, Canada, Argentina in the quarters and Australia in the semi-finals. And they have been the form team, no doubt about that. Well, head to head, these two countries, France and New Zealand, have played 50 times. New Zealand, 37 wins. France, 12 and one draw. It is a clear night in the city of Sales. There are tens of thousands down at Party Central. They had to close down the wharves. And, uh, well, there is some... French fans, young and old, which is great to see. And I can tell you that when the French ran out for their warm-up, they received a wonderful roar from their fans in the stands here. Took a while for the buses to get through the traffic. And a short time ago, the French arrived. They look very relaxed, as usual. There's the captain, Thierry Doucetois. Joe Marceau, the long-time manager on the right. Have they got another wonderful performance in them? They haven't really hit their straps, and yet here they are in the final. That's what the French can do, Kenzie. Yeah, and look at the ages of these guys. They're not young, they're super experienced. They're gnarly old French front row, and they're hard. Pape and Nale, they have done particularly well in the second row. Their line-out play has been good. They've been solid, workmanlike, without being brilliant. But these three have been brilliant the last couple of matches, particularly Bonaire. 
Paranoia Keith from the base of the scrum, and Dusatois will die for his country. I tell you what, Yash really is the architect. They call him the coach. He's the one doing a lot of the uh, the plotting. He's so experienced. Well, Para, the young bloke, he's also a halfback. His pair of left footers will guide France around. Will it be enough? Well, it will be if Mermoz and uh, Rousseri can tackle. Their job will be mainly to contain. Not particularly attacking, especially this World Cup. They're there to stop the All Black centres. And Medard and Claire are brilliant. They can score a try from everywhere. And that's what France will need, especially on the counter-attack, if the All Blacks kick. And the French, coached by Marc Lefremont. It's his last test in charge. He's assisted by Didier Rittier and also Emile Antomac, Dave Ellis and Gonzalo Cusada, uh, the kicking and also defence coaches respectively. They looked pretty relaxed when they went out. It's an old style warm-up for the French. They just sort of have, um, you know, a bit of it. It's almost like a game of touch. At the one end, the All Blacks were doing their refined skills and specific uh, drills. Down the other end, there was an opposed run. That's what the French were doing, running against the reserves. Old school, all right, but that's how they play. Well, at Pool A, it was New Zealand 37, France 17 a few weeks ago. And uh, the All Blacks, look at the crowd, wishing them well as they went through the streets of... Auckland and they arrived a short time ago. Kano's been in great form. Corey Jane, there's a young man, Aaron Cruden, filling in for Dan Carter, Richie McCaw. No sign of uh, any limp when he was warming up a short time ago. And up front it's Woodcock, Mialamu and Owen Franks. Yeah, and haven't they been going well? They put the Wallaby scrum under a lot of pressure about three or four occasions. Wallabies couldn't get the ball out of the scrum, they were solid. And the power from that comes from these two blades, particularly Brad Thorne. Locking down the right-hand side of that scrum. Whitelock, good around the park. He's been understated but fantastic. And these three, well, you don't have to say anymore. Kieran Reid finally hit form last week. Jerome Kano, that tackle on Digby Iwani, perhaps was a match saver for the, for the Kiwis. Perry Weepy runs the game plan for the All Blacks. And especially in the first 20, he took all the pressure off Aaron Cruden about to start his third test. Quite extraordinary. But he'll be the most important player. Nonu, he's the man who bends and usually breaks the line. Conrad Smith is the trailer. Their combination, all four of them so far from the cane. You add into that, Corey Jane also from the Hurricanes. And those five together have got a wonderful combo. Israel Dagg has been in sublime form. Incredible stuff at fullback. And Kahui, more solid than spectacular last weekend. Brad Thorne. The war horse, will it be a fairy tale ending for him? Kano, one of the finalists for the IRB Player of the Year and a lot of people have him as the favourite. Aaron Cruden is just 22 years of age. Of course, the coach is Graham Henry. Is this his swan song? Will it be Steve Hansen taking over? Wayne Smith, of course, is standing down as assistant coach. He's going to be assisting the Chiefs in Super Rugby. And the great Richie McCaw, 30 years of age, 103rd test. There's Graham Henry, been there since 2004. The aerial view of this magnificent stadium and a wonderful atmosphere in New Zealand. The All Blacks have won 20 times, France only four. And the referee tonight, what a moment for Craig Joubert of South Africa. 33 years of age, his first World Cup final. Television match official is Giulio De Santis from Italy. And the assistants on the touchlines are Land Roland of Ireland and Nigel Owens from Wales. McCaw and Doucetois, final shake of the hand and there is plenty of black in the crowd in the 1987 Rugby World Cup final New Zealand beat France 29 to 9 world rankings at the moment New Zealand 1 and France 3 the French actually have leaped for quite a few teams they're up about five places here at this World Cup so France, will it be third time lucky for them after they lost the final in 87 in Auckland and 99 in Cardiff they were the last team to beat New Zealand here at Eden Park. That was 1994. They've beaten New Zealand a semi-final and a quarter-final, but they are none from one in Rugby World Cup deciders against the men in black. And New Zealand still the only unbeaten team at Rugby World Cup 2011. They've been the top-ranked team in World Rugby for the past four seasons, so destiny is on their side. It's been a long time between drinks. It's been 24 years since they lifted the Webb Ellis Cup, and their last appearance in a final was 1995. They disposed of the Wallabies 20 to 6 in last week's semi final, and the All Blacks are hot favourite to win again tonight. France, well, they've beaten New Zealand in a semi final. They know what it takes. They've rewritten the record books at this Rugby World Cup. Not only were they the team to lose two games on the way to the semi finals, they are now into the final. 
and Tiri Dusitois leads them out. There are seven survivors from the squad that beat New Zealand in the 2007 quarter-final in Cardiff. The All Blacks beat France at Eden Park last month in Pool A. They've won the last three against Leibler and are desperate for some payback after France knocked them out of the last World Cup. There are four survivors from that loss. The All Blacks, they've won their last 16 tests on home soil. They've never lost a Rugby World Cup match here at Eden Park. They've won their last 26 tests at this venue. France are playing in a record equaling third Rugby World Cup final, joining Australia, England and New Zealand. But France is the only one of the four yet to win a decider. Waiting for the Pakaya call for these two finalists. Rugby World Cup 2011. I thought Vuvuzelas were banned. <laughs> Rugby World Cup. Stand by. France and New Zealand make their way past Bill. The Web Ellis Cup. France is one of only two teams that has beaten the All Blacks in New Zealand over the past eight years. South Africa the other. And the French have named the same starting 15 for the past three games. Poussevat, Mars, Papé, Nalé, Doucetois, Bonaire, Heron, Ordeke, Yashvili, Pará, Miamos, Rougeri, Claire, Pelisson and Medard. Are we going to see the best of their attacking flair tonight? Or will it be this champion New Zealand team that will shut them down like they've shut every other team down at the World Cup in 2011? Woodcock, Mialamu, Owen Franks, Thorne, 36 years of age, Whitelock, Kano, McCaw, Reed, Weepu, Cruden, Nonu Smith, Jane and Kahui, and the brilliant Israel Dag at fullback. Average age for France is 29 years, 312 days. Second oldest in the Rugby World Cup lineup. Here's the bench Suzuki, Basella Pierre, Wedrago, Dusan, Trinduk and Trey, and Hoare, Ben Franks, Ellie Williams, Ladies and Thompson, Ellis Donald, and Sonny Bill Williams on the bench. Anthems of France and New Zealand. Recorded by the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra and performed by the New Zealand Choral Federation Anthem Choir, featuring Will Martin and Hayley Westenrow. Allons enfants de la patrie, le jour de gloire est arrivé. Contre nous de la tyrannie, les tendances sanglantes élevées, les tendances sanglantes élevées. Entendez-vous dans les campagnes, où j'ai ces féroces soldats. They look pumped, the French. And now, the anthem of New Zealand, the host nation.
magnificent roar for the All Blacks. Goal gets it now for the Haka. Don't you, don't you just love that line in the French anthem? With the blood of our enemies will fertilise our soil. <laughs> Isn't that going to be good tonight? And I reckon this is going to be good as well. The last Haka of Rugby World Cup 2011. There's an interesting tactic. The French went and took their tracksuit tops off, revealing their wide outfits, which they decided to wear. They had the choice of taking a toss, and they said, no, we'll let you wear your black. But they've, they've taken a bit of the sting out of the start of the Harker by getting changed now, not later. Look at this, arrow formation. Well, we haven't seen that before. find France for that, do something stupid like that. They couldn't give a stuff, that was magnificent <laughs> television. Exactly. That was the well, they're, they're up for it. I don't think the French did it for television. No. <laughs> they went, how are we going to get ourselves puffed up? They knew what to expect from the All Blacks, but they've done something I've never seen. Well, the All Blacks are ranked number one for more time than any other nations combined. More Rugby World Cup points than any other nation. 602 more than the second place to Australia. The New Zealanders have won more Rugby World Cup matches than any other team, and they've scored the most tries over the years. And New Zealand is the only team to finish first in their pool at all Rugby World Cup tournaments. Rod Caper sideline, impressive stats for the host nation. They are, and it's game on. The French are dead up for it. I'm sitting right next to the All Blacks bench here. They're still talking about it. They can't get over it. They are so pumped down here. Ali Williams jumping around, wants to get on the field. There's a real excitement, obviously, in the crowd and, and on the field. The players are right up for it. It's going to be a crackerjack start. Can the French bring the physicality that they need to absorb the pressure the All Blacks will apply to them? Can they un unsettle them with their aggressive style of rucking and mauling? And they'll be into everything the French. And it's going to be an absolute cracker. Certain pockets of French fans around the ground. Cape's got about 400, I just showed it on telly. Right behind you, Cape. Yeah, they are well up for it, the French now. So New Zealand has won nine from 11 tests this year, losing to Australia and Tri-Nations. France, nine from 13. Craig Joubert of South Africa gets us underway. Rugby World Cup 2011, the final. Mistake from France and Cruden out to Weep who throws the dummy and the white jerseys of the French are in there to claim him on the 10 metre mark, New Zealand Territory. Perfect conditions in Auckland. There's Cruden, he goes high. Midard takes it. And he's taken about 12 from halfway. Slow coming out of there. There's a box kick off the left foot of Yashvili. And it is out on the full. 
Well, it took 46 seconds for the French to make a mistake. It took about two seconds for Australia to make a mistake against the All Blacks kicking out on the fall from the initial kickoff last week. Well, let's forget about that, Clarky. That's over. Yeah. But this is going to be good field position for the All Blacks. If they can claim the first line out of the match. Mialamo in his 92nd test match equals a great Sean Fitzpatrick. An overthrow there and Bonaire takes it away for France. Maybe a little nerves early on in the All Black line out. Para and Niemos to Rougerie and they go through the hands. 14 is Vincent Clair, six tries, equal first in the Rugby World Cup 2011. Perrar again. Looking to go wide. This is Mark. Imanol. Aaron Ordecke. McCaw holds on. 10 metre mark. Stretching the All Black defence. So McCaw made no attempt to get out of there. But it's going to come eventually for the French. Perrar gets it out to Pascal Pape in the four jersey. Dusatoire. The captain from Toulouse. Here they go again. Rougeri. This time he takes the tackle and he pops it up to Parat. He's taken immediately by Mialamu. Jean Baptiste Pou. Went through the hands of Midard. He got away from one. He recovers brilliantly the fullback. Up to the halfway. And oh, over. This is where they need fast ball. Yashvili Parra. Niemos. Turns Rougerie back on the inside. He pops it up to Parra. And he's hammered. Brilliant tackle. Conrad Smith. Hammer time. It's all right. The French just keep churning it out. Nelly. Got it out to one of his forwards. And now Yashvili goes across to the 11, which is Pelisson. Looking to go wide, the French. Penalty against France, though. Number one Holding on. For gun. All Blacks putting numbers to the breakdown. Number also, one arriving player. As they do, just causing some problems there, players. A little bit slow rolling away. They're just... Um, slowing down that French ball uh, whenever they get the opportunity to. I like the French strategy though, Cave. They are loose, but they're stretching the All Blacks. You're not going to die. You're not going to uh, win this game by defending and playing Dower. So here is Look at Richie McCaw still holding on to the player he tackled. Sorry, see that arm there? Yeah, it should, it should have been a penalty a number of occasions against New Zealand for not rolling away at the breakdown. This time... They knock it down through Brad Thorne, and here's Richard Carhui. All Blacks have it. 10 metre mark, France territory. Franks, pick and go. Brendan to his opposite number, Nicholas Muss. McCaw. Aaron Ordecke holds on. Now, Weeby wants to go left. Day just lost his footing somewhat. It was taken by Savat. And they're into touch, but he was playing advantage. Parah just misreading that. He raced up and was caught offside. So, you'd think they'd have a shot from here. It'll be Piri Wipu. Nice and wide on his good side. It's a big kick, though. 37 out on a big angle. Another one of the finalists for the IRB Player of the Year to be named on Monday in Auckland. He's 15 from 20 shots at goal during the World Cup. 75%. You see Parade just got it wrong there and the referee warned him to get back and he sort of did, but it was too late. Gee, gee, I reckon that was a bit rough. He retreated. I hope the referee does that every time. Penalty for every time someone's inside. Because I love people being onside. Gives you more room. New Zealand has won five of six Rugby World Cup matches in this tournament by 20-plus points. 
Last week it was only 14 points. So they have been so dominant. And can Piri Wupu get them on the score sheet first? That's six metres in from the far touch. Wipu, first shot at goal. No. It's a shocker. He snapped at that one. A few nerves there, Kafe, perhaps. Perhaps from Piri. Could be. Could be a difficult kick early on. You'd probably want your first kick to be on the 22 dead yeah. in front if you can choose a spot. Even a bit closer. Don't, don't you want them all from there? <laughs> yeah, exactly. French looking to use the ball. It's been very obvious they've come out to play. They've, everyone was riding them off as being a kicking team, and all of a sudden they've started the game with a real running attitude, a short kickoff as well, competitive. Ball in play, and it's there for France. Oh, man, no, no, it was a mile offside. And they go wide. Parra out to the support. Barrar again, up over halfway. Seems to be a lot of urgency in this French play early on. Lionel Mallet, the veteran, 35 years of age, and they turn it over. No, they don't. It's back there for France now. Barrar thought about kicking. Miamaz, now he gets it up to Pape. Madan is up from fullback. And Pelisson has to cut back in field. McCaw is over the top of him. Double round. And now from a standing start, the French try and get something going. Almost intercepted. Knocked on. The pass from Nelly. Knocked on and so now they can go wide. Advantage is over. Here's Pruden. Bonaire went high. And Pusatois low. Oh, smash down, Gruden. Smith. Wipu pops it out to Franks. There's a bundle of all blacks this side. Not, not a lot of French defenders. And Nonu kicking. And it looks to be a good one. It's a beauty. Nil all in the final. How much do you love the way the French are playing? Wide, trying to drop it in. If they run out of players, they drop it on the inside, hang on to ball and go again the others were other way. Stretching and stretching the All Blacks. Playing a more careful game. Well, I think that's the first time I've ever seen Ma'a Nonu kick the footy. That was a great hit from Joseph Clark. Well, he didn't mind a grubber kick, Ma. All Blacks are trying to put some pressure on at the line out here. French have gone to a five-man line out. Watch for Aaron Nordicke. Starting there in the middle of the line out. It looks a sneak down to the front. And it is Aaron Ordeghi who takes it with two hands. Nine, but it's gone. Left footed kick. Oh, oh. Like it a lot. Corey Jones thought about the quick one. Good chase. That shows attitude from the, from the Frenchman. Gee, that was a super kick. No angle. Left foot. Twice now, Kevin Milama is thrown to Brad Thorne at the back of the line. They've changed it up now. Thorne in normal position. Kieran Weed wins it off the top. Nonu. Crash ball. Good defence, France. Now, Corey James was isolated on this side, so he ran back into the traffic. Parra's down injured. He's the one who tackled Nonu, not well. We well, tackled him well, but he's not feeling well. Turnover. Yeah, it's play on. And Rougerie drops it on to the left foot. Oh, good kick. Will it roll into touch? Yes, oh. it will. Ten out from the New Zealand line. Parra's still down. It was a good leg tackle. It, he tackled him just on the knees. Must have copped one in the nose, head, whatever. They can't afford to lose him. Well, I know, trying to do it. The reserve five age isn't bad, but they form so much of their attack around power. Yeah, one of the French front rowers needed to go down injured then. Slow the play down, let Parag get a chance to get into it. Reed wins the line out again for New Zealand. Weepoo. It's not going to 
Beyond a touch. They fire it into Madad. Nowhere for him to go. He's on the 10 metre mark. Not scared to take the line on Madad. Oh, McCaw off his feet. That's unbelievable. He's just trying to make a mess of every break down. Richie McCaw, Brad Thorne. The pair of them doing a great job at slowing the ball down. Ferrara is still down. They're still going to run wide, the French. Down a back. And there's a chip kick, and it is into touch. Could have been a better kick, but again, executing the width. This is how you'll uh, create some opportunities and gaps. There's Trondok. If needed, he'll be the reserve fire fly half, and it looks like Para is coming off. I guess they'll find blood. Yeah, he's, he's uh, in a bit of Disneyland there. Here it is. From that. Oh, I think it might have been McCaw coming over the top. They've got him there. Yeah. The accidental knee to the side of the heads. What did the job? Is that accidental like Quaid's? Same sort of accidental movement. Yeah. yeah. Well, well Trinduk, Trinduk was the player who was at the World Cup to be fly half. He's been there for the last three years with France and now Paras taking a spot. He's offside. The chaser is offside for New Zealand. Gee. Now they put it across into midfield. Near Moz. Keep Brad Thorne got there quickly. Trinduk was the tackle player. Oh, black. Move away. And a penalty goes against the home team. Okay, leave him, leave him. I've given the penalty. Out of the way of the ball, please. So a hectic pace so far. And we'll just have to see if it is a blood bin or a full substitution. For Para. Be a pity to lose him because he started the game well. Para. Trinduk did well here as well to stay in control. Yeah, the French coaching team thought it was a penalty. Well, that's their manager, Joe Masso. Trinduk, he won't be worried. He's played a heap of footy outside Dimitri Yasvili at halfback. Overthrow, dragged down by Gusatoire, and the All Blacks are right over the top of him. Penalty holding on. Oh, magnificent tackle from Mitchie McCaw at the back. Yeah. He twisted Gusatoire yeah. around in the wrong Nandre. direction. And then we do launch straight on to it. I'm figuring that was an overthrow. That wasn't a planned line out throw. No, definitely overthrow. <laughs> Had no one in support there. Dusatois. Tanduk needed to really come up and clean that ball out as Puri Wipu. Mm, he a great kick, Puri Wipu. Nine metres out. Terrific kick. It's his tackle at the back. See the way McCall holds him down there. First real attacking chance for the All Blacks. 14 minutes gone. Kevin Mialamu finds the target. Inside it goes. First try of the match. Tony Woodcock. Well, a magnificently executed set piece. One pod went to the front, one pod went to the back, and they left the middle open. The ball went up and just popped it down to Woodcock. There was no one in front of him. That's the danger with this New Zealand zone. Technic team, technically perfect. It would have worked on that so hard, Kenzie. Yeah, there it is. Two pods went up. You saw it. French went forward, French went back, and there's the hole in the middle. Oh, incredible stuff. The way that opened up, it was four metres between the two pods. Yeah, coaches love that. Steve Hansen would be giggling on the inside. That's what you coach and train for. Why didn't Tony Woodcock take it under the post? Well, that's his eighth test try, Woodcock. Second Rugby World Cup. And aren't they happy? <laughs> well, they we they've weathered a fair bit of a storm from France. They've thrown everything at them. Wide running, bit of forward running, no kicking. They've had to tackle and defend, finally got a chance. And it was thanks to Weepu's kick from the penalty, got him within nine metres that that try occurred. 
Watch for some variations of that line out. If the All Blacks get in a similar position. Reboot. Trouble. Look at the crowd, yep. 5-0. None from two for Piri Wipu. Struck that one a little bit better, but um, shaved it. You can see the trick with that liner to get that space is, is the All Blacks needed to know that France would put that pot up in the middle. Because if they don't put the pot up, then there's no hole because they fill it. They put it up and they took advantage of it, the All Blacks. Corey Jane. Man of the match last week in the semi-final win over Australia. Limited opportunity so far in the first 16 minutes. Box kick going up. And it's Weepu. Harren Ordecke coming forward. All Blacks contesting it. Oh. Now just throwing it away. And a chance out wide. Conrad Smith up over halfway. Richard Kahui cuts back in. Dag. Well, the French had that and then all of a sudden just threw it away. And now it's a penalty. Hands in the ruck. Hands oh. in the ruck there, there, from there. New Zealand. Magnificent. Hands in the ruck. Yeah, Dusatois was unbelievable the way he got around there. Ruck formed hands. So we approach a situation like that is a wide. That was a fast breakout and went to the full width. And Dusatois, the open flanker for the French and their captain, got there first. And, uh, oh, that does put the kick out. Oh, super kick too. Look at that. Penalty kicking out of hand has been wonderful this evening. Making 50 metres, not just pop gunning it out 25. They're chewing off large chunks of territory when you've got the chance at a free hit with your own line out throw. So it must have been blood bin for... Morgan Parra, he goes back out to fly half and Francois Trunduk returns to the bench. We might see Martin Nonu run at Parra before too long. William Sabat, the 33-year-old from Toulouse to throw in for France. And Harold Ordecke drags it down on the 22. Collapse more, legally. All Blacks able to come through the middle, and so they will get the put in. So, come towards good me work by the men in black. The All Black defence of the attempted rolling more from the French has been very good. The White Lock was onto the ball straight away and just did not budge. Milan moving over the top as well. Crouch. Heavier pack, New Zealand. Touch. Pause. Engage. Good hit by the All Blacks. Stand up, please. Wait for the ball. So much confidence Wait in the, the All Black scrum after last week. Getting on top of the Australians. They're feeling pretty good about themselves. The French are a bit wild here at scrum time, but still. She was loose on this side. Yeah. French often do that first scrum of the match. Crouch. First couple of scrums, they might just ease off a little bit and then second Touch. go, they get into it. Pause. In go. Penalty goes against France. Collapsing. Collapsing is the call from the referee. Piri Wipu bangs it into touch. Be around about the halfway mark. Seemed to me the French scrum may have had the upper hand then. I thought so too, Kearns. They were really putting some weight through. You can see it come through. They did just poo on that um, loose head side. Just rolled in a little bit, which I think the referee it was a penalty. Oh, good run from Richard Kahui up to the 10 metre mark. Well over the advantage line, they're away. Here's Kieran Reid. Good tackle, Savat. Weepu to Mialamu. Para and Poo making the tackle. Now it's Pruden. 
taken by Rougier, but he lays it back. Pick and go here from Kano. Have to be careful that the French have got to stop the All Blacks just picking and driving through the middle. Nono fires it out to Reed in midfield. Good strong run by the number eight. The ball is out, the die pass, and now the inside ball to Nono. Oh, brilliantly timed tackle by Eric Gorky. Trouble here for the French. But Nealamo yeah. goes to ground with it eventually. Again, still trouble. McCall's on the right wing way out here. Cruden, long ball out to McCaw. Had to stop to pick it up, and the guard made the tackle. Reed, oh, no, no. Conrad Smith, wide they go. Israel Dag inside. Jane is into touch. Oh, they're relent as the French defence has managed to cover. They scrambled nicely. Only the 12th appearance in a test match for Israel Dang. But five tries at this tournament for the all-back fullback. Missed a couple of games for injury as well. Reed looking dangerous in midfield. Aurelien Rougerie, 31 years of age now, his 17th Rugby World Cup, kept the 13 for France. Power yeah, again. His left shoulder has to go back on. This is a fair dinkum substitute, this one. Yes, he is. I was reliably informed during the week that Kieran Reid could have played the Black Caps. I reckon he's a gun cricketer and was on the verge of Black Cap selection. One of a batsman, would that be correct? I don't know. Oh, yeah, I was told that at the age of 15 he was playing A grade cricket. Good take. Eminol Haranordigi. Bonaire rolls it back. He's going to have to box kick it because there's no other volunteers. Kahui claimed yeah. immediately. See that knees up style of catching it? That's what makes him so strong in the air. Israel Dan. Back inside it goes to Cruden. Weepu. Reed. Taken by Trimduk. There's Nonu. Who makes the tackle? Quick ball though. And Day kicking for the corner. And in a touch it goes. Right kick. Good vision. There was nobody down in that corner for the Frenchman. Dag was quick enough to size it up. You see he's coming in as he did last week, the first receiver to take over the kicking role from Aaron Cruden, who is three wider. It's interesting, we haven't haven't seen Cruden a lot as first receiver receiver. Nono's done it a few times. They'll nurse him through this first part, Kenzie, and then let him slot into a more traditional 10 roll. All Blacks now starting to dominate territory and putting the French under pressure. It's another good kick. Relieving a bit of pressure. But it will be All Blacks with the throw in on the 22. They lead 5 0. Mark Lee from on in his last match as the French coach in Morgan Barra, his night is over. Philippe Sinandre is the coach in waiting for France. Oh, Morgan Barra very upset on the sideline. Sam Whitelock wins the line out. Here's a drive from the All Blacks. McCaw has it at the back. Out the back door it goes, and now Cruden gives it to Conrad Smith. Rougerie holds on. Fell awkwardly, Smith, and it might be a turnover. Oh, oh. 
There was havoc there on the ground. And the French get the benefits of it. Yes, why'd they go now? But the All Blacks had four defenders in the backfield waiting for the kicks. The French decided to run, haven't made too much. The counter up is very good from the All Blacks and they win the penalty. Hand in the rock from France. Right play on the floor. It took way too long to get it out, the French. It was Vincent Clare who was there at the back. He should have just scooped it straight out of there. The yeah. French body height was way too high. It's a real dangerous tactic, particularly opposition back lines. When the, when the All Black forward sense that it's just the, the back line in there protecting the ball, that's when they love to pile in. And the, as, and the tight five of the All Black recognise those uh, opportunities. Every time they see it, they just put numbers in there. It's Brad Thorne and Woodcock. Guys like that flying in, and it's just the body weight and the size of them which can generate those turnovers. About 13 metres in from touch. 30 metres back. Oh, oh dear. If you watch that close-up of his face, you can see the computer whirring around and the uh, eyes lining up the post back to the ball. Now he's thinking too much about it. Yeah, I was just about to say, it looks like he's thinking too much. But before you'd see period kick, you just sort of put down, walk yep. back, smack it in. And now there's, it looks like there's a billion things going through his mind at once. Anyone who's been here this week in New Zealand will realise the pressure. He has been one of the main focuses. You can say you're not under pressure, but uh, you don't even realise it. A weekly fires it out to uh, Crude and Reed. Still being used in that midfield role. Cruden, they raced up and shut him down. Yeah. You sense every time that Cruden gets the ball, the French have a little glisten in there. Oh. Dang. That's the danger. Mielamu gives it now to Brad Thorne. The presentation of the balls, wonderful. Weepu looked up, and again, he's able to bang it into touch. No worries, if he's kicking out of hand. Brilliant stuff from the nine. They're just slowly turning the screw at the moment. The All Blacks, their running game's been good, their ball security's been good, and then it's been a couple of nice kicks that have put them in positions to score points. Only got the five to show for it, but it's, it's around about this point in the game where the defence starts to tire. The French have been fantastic in defence. The All Blacks will look to put this line under pressure if they can. Brad Thorne misses the jump at the front. Nelly took it for France. I think Woodcock offside, he came around the side. Into touch. Yeah, squeeze the best out of that kick as well. We've seen some great kicking tonight. Apart from the goal kicking, of course. The general out of the hand kicking is good. The French are really struggling to get out of their half. I think they've been in New Zealand territory twice. Both occasions have given away a penalty or lost the ball. Cruden. Now Nonu. Wide they go. Straight running from Conrad Smith. Kano to Weepu Cruden. Kieran Reid. Nelly couldn't hold on. Reid to the 22. Super gap running. And they're a chance here. Dave on the inside, James. Gee, they needed to go wide, the All Blacks. The French still short in defence out there. And that's where they go now. The grubber kicks through from Kahui, and it's too big. Oh, Ruth and Reed showed good patience and judgment there to stay ahead of Rich McCaw. Someone's down, Clarky. Who's that? Looks Line to be. jumper, is it? Or no, no, 12, is it? Mian, Mian, Maxi Mian, the inside centre. He must have made whoever cut back there, did he make that tackle? Probably on uh, Conrad Smith, was it? Or Corey Jane? 
Well, there's Gruden. That was a super ball yeah. there. Two blokes running pretty much at the same hole and Thorne and Kieran Reid. Here's the ball from Nonu. A little kick through. Oh, straight between the legs from Kahui. This has been the tackle before when Memoz, the inside centre, got injured. Good chase from uh, Richie McCaw. Certainly nothing wrong with his ankle. So Kieran Reid. 36th test match, Rougerie, his 71st. He actually stormed out of a press conference this week. He was pretty much tired of the same questions being asked. So he said, I've had enough. Didn't endear himself to the French and the rest of the international media at the conference. Oh, they're, they're a circus, the whole French media operation. The Ashville with the kick, Kano with the take. Knock forward, though. First real error of the game by the All Blacks. Great pressure from Aaron Nordicke. You see the All Blacks trying to block his path through, but he managed to find a way. I had another look at last weekend's game, All Blacks Australia. The number of times they were blocking the paths of players chasing kicks was extraordinary. Kino. Yeah, I wish the ball was still there when I did that. Inside the final 10 minutes of the first half, New Zealand 5, France 0. Yashvili with the put in. And he reaches in and takes it out. Gives it to Thrunduk. It's been touched by the All Blacks. And oh, oh no, it's out. into touch. Just had a foot on the line. Nigel Owens, the assistant referee, took a while but then decided to put the flag up. And it was touched by an All Black. And look at it here. I got that first nose right now. This next one. There. Yeah. Crowd Craig disagrees. Doesn't matter. Craig Joubert said it was carried back anyway. Yeah. So no matter what, it was always going to be a line out from near enough to this position. Great opportunity for the French. They've gone to a seven man line out. And they win it through Nelle. The All Black forwards have all spread. Bonaire. What a terrific athlete he is. So the French just looking to rumble it through the forwards. Yes, Philly wants another run up. And he gives it to Savat. Lost forward by France. So again, inside the New Zealand territory and they can't come up with anything. Yeah, they've lost some points before half time. Not a real, real worry, only two errors, handling wise. Must have got, oh, there, the shoulder. No, no it squeezed out as he went to deck. Joe Masso. Maybe not happy with the tackle, leading with the shoulder, but mm. anyway, it is a scrum and uh, we've got a man down. Really gnarly set of French forwards, aren't they? I mean, you've played against them a lot, and uh, and the, the tough roost was, remember Dave Brockoff saying, I should go over to France and play. He said, Billy, Billy, you'll do well in France. You're Not sure why, Cave. You're tough. <laughs> I, think, I think he thought you were a tough lad, Phil. He had that wrong. <laughs> I like that, David Brockoff. But um, the French really looking to put some pressure on here at the scrum. Their front rower already set nice and low. They want to put pressure on. They just need to keep it up. Trunks. Joubert's on the Trunks. loose head side Pause. for France with have had some issues. Yeah. France went early. And the All Blacks again get the pressure. Valve released. No, no real pressure in their own 22 in the match so far for the All Blacks. The French have had some pressure. Puri Wipu puts a good kick in, but it's going to be French ball. It was a free kick. So the French will have the throw to this line. And again, in got some field position. Not a bad place to attack from. Lots of space. The fullback for the opposition will tend to be a little bit deeper here. So there's a bit of space on the end of the line that the French could utilise. They haven't really, from first phase, unleashed their back line yet. It's all been forward drives. Let's see if they get it. No. Oh. Stolen by Whitelock down to Weepu. And now Cruden taking them on. Taken by Trunduk. Weepu to Brad Thorne. Over halfway. 
Oh, Knock on. Lost forward there. Cruden's down injured. He threw the dummy, but whoever was defending on him, I'm not sure who it was, really came across and gave him one. That's only it. His knee must have got and stood on. for your number 12 right there. At the 22 metre drop -up. Well, no sign of Milanophobia, Mato, from the uh, French. Well, what, what? Of Milanophobia. What's Milanophobia? Fear of the colour black. <laughs> it wouldn't want to be because that's all there is in Auckland. <laughs> oh, sure there's 61,000 or whatever there is in this stadium, but uh, in the city of Auckland, they're estimating up to 300,000 people wandering the streets right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Hyper extended that knee. Look. Was, it was always awkward. Got hyper-extended there, the right leg by Cruden. There, there, there's some problems there. Just being checked now. I'll tell you what, even though they're way outnumbered, the French supporters here, they are having way more fun than the all-black supporters. <laughs> <laughs> When's the last time you wore a chicken on your head? Oh, That's when you have fun. Yeah. The referee allowing them to... Have a look at it. Take their time. Oh, it gets caught there, up there. There. That would have hurt. Well, is this number 10 jersey jinxed? Carter, Slade. Oh, I'll tell you, it's Stephen Donald here. Ooh. We're not sure whether he's going to come off. Stephen Donald's still got the tracksuit on now. He's about to take it off. Is it a wise idea? Yeah, he's, he's... There he is. He's still... there, not going on yet. It's going to be tough for Cruden to stay on it. Oh, I think he's in some trouble. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that grabbing knee. That's... Oh, well, this is a real shame for the youngster. Oh. 22 years of age. He was going to be skateboarding for these weeks. He's supposed to be in Disneyland. He's going next week now. So Stephen Donald, the 27-year-old, he is the first to make a debut at a World Cup in a final. Whoa. What a moment for him. First World Cup game, and it's a final. I'll tell you what, he's doing well to be here. He was white baiting, whatever that is. It's some sort of fishing <laughs> in the Waikato River when they rang him to tell him he was in the squad again last week. So both teams are without their 22-year-old fly halves, first choice fly halves. Oh, yes, New Zealand went in early that time. Number one back, falling straight down stairs. It's against Tony Woodcock, the try scorer. There'll be a lot of New Zealanders watching this in the stadium, at home, on TV, maybe even in Australia, who are going, Stephen Donald, I'm now very nervous because they lost respect, of him, respect for him last year at the Hong Kong te Legislative Test Match. Yeah, they blamed him for that match. Completely blamed him, and that was virtually the end of his all-black career. That was before the next three best tens are all injured. He's back yeah. in there. Extraordinary turn of events. Yes, yep. Yeah. Let's see how they cope with it. I mean, Stephen Donald's a very good footballer, experienced, good defender. He's solid. Solid, good kicking game. He's a big unit. Yeah. He's good at taking the ball to the line. Well, 99 kilos, I think. Oh, they lose it, but then Aeronautica comes through and claims it for France. So oh, That looked like it came off a French hand forward. Sabat. McCaw makes the tackle. They may have a go at a field goal here. Tramduk moving into the pocket at the back on the right of the screen. Harrod Ortiki. Back it goes. Here we go. Tramduk from a long way out. He struck it all right. Now to the right. Out to the right. So it's still 5-0. 35 minutes gone in the final. The New Zealand defence was lined up, well organised. So they decided to take some points while they were down there. Didn't miss by much. Probably five metres in it. So three missed shots at goal by New Zealand, two penalties and a conversion, and one missed drop goal by France. Their first scoring opportunity, and Aaron Cruden. He copped plenty from the defence. They ran at him, and they tackled him hard when he had the ball. Short drop out from Wipu, and McCaw is there. Brilliant. So they've been able to snuff out any French 
attacking. Oh, Stephen Donald almost had that charge down. How would that be your first attacking movement? And Medard goes high. Dag is going to take it under no real pressure and got away from one. And he got it away to Nonu. He kicks in field. Rougerie. He's a chance for France to run. Miamas. No, it's Trinduk. Trinduk dummying. The fly half. Ankle tap. About 30 metres out. How quick is he? Got to come wide now. They're a chance. And the front rowers get it out to Pape. He straightens up to the 22. Yashvili. Savat. France for a chance out wide. Miamo straightens. Trenduk cuts back in field. This time he can't find a way through. Taken by Woodcock. And he's held up, Trenduk. And the Fords have got to get there. They've got to put numbers in. It doesn't come. Collapse ball. Incredible defence again Collapse from the All Blacks. Morgan Parra. Off twice. The second time he stayed off after a big head knock on Ma Nonu's knee. What about Trenduk? I couldn't believe how quick he was. I don't think the uh, all-black defence could either. Kaino had to keep an eye on the outside man, but he'd beaten Perry Weepu. Just got a uh, a little flick to him. Look at that. It's such an annoying thing when you're on the fly. It's a beautiful ankle tap. And here he goes again, and you'll see there Woodcock, McCaw. Is it Weepu in there as well? Got him up. The choker tackle where you hold the man up off the ground. Weepu puts it in eventually. Nonu. Six watts. Six watts. It's against Dusatois. Yeah, release. Oh, you heard the referee warn him. All right, okay, okay. Let him get up. That's fine. That's fine. No, no, just. One and a half minutes remaining. Better push and shove. Get involved. Stay back, stay back. Well, frustration there, and I can just get up and get away. Yeah. All right. So Craig Bear warns Richie McCaw for the first Richie, time. Can you have that word, please. You do have that word with him, right? He's telling. He's telling Richie to tell the team they've got to. Oh, there's a space. horror kick. There's a chance. Pelisson, he goes high for Rougerie to chase. And Dag gets it over now to Donald Nonu. Nonu runs and got the pass away to Kahui. There's so much shepherding of the French defence going on here by the All Blacks, just blocking defenders from running through. Kevin Mialamo did it on that occasion. Great take. Yashvili. Quick ball. Niemos. Pape. The All Blacks oh, pouring yeah. through. They worked hard, but they missed the ball. Here's Dusatois. Kano went looking for his opposite number. Trenduk. Oh, he's got the ball. Just before half time, dangerous. The All Blacks will probably take it slow to this line out. They'll probably want to go to the sheds now, given that um, it's in one of those positions on the field where. Oh, quick line out. Different ball, you can't take a quick throw. Do it again. Different ball. Different there it is, Craig Joubert says different ball. It has to obviously be the same ball that hasn't been touched by another person for you to take the quick line out. The All Blacks are probably trying to win this just comfortably at the front, kicking it in touch. McCaw, claimed by Bonaire. The team, leading at half-time in every final so far, has gone on to win the Webb Ellis Cup. And at half-time at Eden Park, Rugby World Cup 2011, it is the All Blacks leading France by five points to nil. An arm wrestle. Both fly halves replaced. Just the one try to Tony Woodcock for New Zealand.
Piriwipu has missed three shots at goal and one failed drop goal attempt by France. So we'll take a break from Eden Park at half time. It's New Zealand 5, France 0.